All right, it's always nice to get back to a project that I haven't done anything on for a year. But it's January, and I decided I would finish the S55's motor. Now, I already did the video on doing the uh, rod bearings, which were worn out. That's a year old. Good luck finding it. And these were torque to yield bolts here on the rods. Mercedes. And yes, the rod bearings are expensive. I think I spent a grand. Now we have the timing chain. Now, the timing chain is a little more challenging. And here are the instructions. And everybody can look at it for as long as they want. But the point is, is that I flipped the motor upside down, even though the picture here shows it right side up. If you have it upside down, the weight of the cam sprockets holds it down. You can also see that I used zip ties here because once I got this settled, I didn't want the cam sprockets coming out. I also put up here another zip tie because this is a free floating chain guide. The other ones are actually hydraulically operated. That's my understanding. Now I also replaced the oil pump chain here. You can uh, see it here. I haven't installed it yet, but we'll get there. Now these chains come uh, as one piece. They, uh, they're they not in a circular piece. And you see these copper pieces here. These have to be attached. And there's another one. And another one. So you have to take these chains, and I took them, the timing chains, as well as the oil sprocket chain, to a professional mechanic who only does Mercedes. And he set them up for me because I couldn't find a tool that would allow me to do it. And at the time, I didn't have the skill set necessary to do it. So as you read these instructions, these sprocket wheels are identical. Except for you see the little R there saying right. And you see this little triangle, this arrow pointing. See how it points to the center of this copper plate? Same thing is true over here. There's the little L, and then there's the arrow. So left-hand side, use L. Right-hand side, you use R. So the first step is to get these camshaft sprockets lined up, just as this indicates you're supposed to do. Now, the motor is upside down as I previously mentioned. The next step is you see this copper plate and you see this copper plate. And if you look at the instructions, there's number one and there's three. And this little thing right there is the copper plate and that's the copper plate. So the idea is to get these copper plates lined up with the correct arrows on the camshaft sprocket and then make sure that this copper plate is exactly where it says it's supposed to be, right there, right on the top. And this one here is supposed to be right on the top. Now, what I haven't shown you is that there is a Woodruff key and the Woodruff key is located right in there. And that Woodruff key is how you decide if the crank is where it's supposed to be. I also put the flywheel on, which I'll see if I can get a picture of it. It is at 40 degrees. That's another way of confirming that you're at the right spot. Let's see if I can get it. There's 40 right there, right where my thumb is. See if I can get a picture of it. And it's lined up perfectly with the Woodruff key. Now, if the motor was right side up, it would be heading straight up. Now, notice how this copper plate is off a little bit. Well, that's in fact the way it is in the picture. It's off a little bit. Not a lot, but just a little bit. So just realize that 
the goal is to get all these lined up and have the crank in the 40 degree position, which is where the Woodruff key is. And it, if this engine was upright, it would be facing straight up. I confirmed it by putting on the uh, harmonic balancer here, not the flywheel, and it's aligned at 40 degrees. So these are multiple checks and balances. As I mentioned, I zip tied this so I wouldn't have to have it falling off. I also replaced the old chain guides with new ones. It came from FCP Euro this way. And now the next step is getting the oil pump on. Now the oil pump is interesting in that this is the old flow control valve fits in like that. Well, I thought, do I want, this car's a 2003, do I want a 21 year old piece of plastic inside the oil pump? And I said, no. So I bought a new one. And here's the number. That's the oil pump seal. And obviously I ordered it from Mercedes. As always, I compare new parts to old parts, and there's a slight change. You can see this one's got more ribs on it. I don't know why. Dealership doesn't know why. But they're functionally the same, except for this little, see this little lip right there? The old one doesn't have that. So I assume it's been changed over time. The point is, this is what you get. So I cleaned out the hole. I'm slipping that in. And then we come over to the oil pump. Now this is different from an E55. The E55 is more too complicated. This is a S55. And let's see if I can do this one-handed. Oh, this is gonna be a spaz attack. Yes. So Try to get it lined up. I'm tilting it. I tilted it to get the chain lined up, the oil pump chain. And the new oil seal is there. This looks good, that looks good. And then of course, we come to the wonderful world of bolts. Now these bolts take 20 newton meters or 177 inch pounds. And line it up. Now each bolt has been cleaned. Each receiving hole has been cleaned, as I always do, because I don't want to start torquing these down and discover there's some sort of crud on the bolt. It's just easier to kit them with some brake clean, let them dry, and go from there. So that's the progress I've made. I decided that January would be finish this project month. Last year I went on a trip to Florida, which was a riot. I loved it. But see how I, I thread them in, as we all do, by hand. Don't hit them. Make sure they go in easy. You don't want to obviously cross-thread something or discover that there's an impediment to the bolt going in because there's schmutz and obviously there's schmutz here. A little hard to tell, but I'm getting a lot of resistance. This one's going in nice and smooth. This one's going in nice and smooth. And this one is giving me some trouble. So what I'm gonna do is pull it back out, clean this a little bit more, and I'll be back. So I got a little bit better light. See this 177 inch pounds. Now, why do I take so much time and trouble to cleaning threads? Because I'm not torquing this down to 100 foot pounds. This is 100 inch, 177 inch pounds or 20 newton meters. So I want to make sure this is done accurately. And I always like to torque things down progressively. Don't know why. I'm doing that. Haven't heard the click yet. 
Now, this, I believe, is an aluminum block. This is not the time to ruin something. There, click. And we're going to do the same thing over here. Click. Now, it seems that people like to click two or three times. I've never understood that. I figure one and done, but then I'll do it twice. That would make people are happy that I've done it the right way. One thing I forgot to mention is that when you're putting, I believe it's this one, back on, it actually tightens to the left. And you got to remember that. It'll be sort of obvious as you try putting this in. It won't tighten to the right. You've got to tighten it to the left. But it's just a detail. And things look good. Making progress. I wish I had done this a year ago when I actually knew a lot of this stuff. But it's coming back to me. I'll One small back. correction. Here's an orientation. Engine's upside down. Uh, this is the timing chain guide wheel. This is the one that's a reverse thread, and I torqued it to 58 Newton meters. Easy to do, just wanted to get you the details. Notice this is the copper plate, copper plate, copper plate, and copper plate. We've already seen the uh, oil pump being installed, 177 inch pounds here, it went well. Everything looks good. I'm quite happy with it. This copper plate doesn't matter. Its orientation is irrelevant. That's just how you hook it together. Uh, this is a tensioner uh, for the oil pump chain. It takes a little bit, it takes two hands to get it to slide in. Oh, yeah, well, I haven't done it yet. I can't do it on camera. I'll be back.